Microsoft Project is a powerful project management software application available in the safety laboratories. It is a highly recommended software package to learn. With Microsoft Project you can create a game chart to plan your project, allocate resources efficiently, create many powerful reports, track the progress of your project over time. For example, you can see how the changes affect your budget over time. Microsoft Project Experience is valuable for job interviews and placing on your CV. By using Project as a planning tool in your subjects, you can talk about how you use it for time management and planning projects. To use a Microsoft Project, you need to have an understanding about Gantt charts. Gantt charts show the sequence of activities and how long these activities should take. They can also indicate where two or more activities occur at the same time. The example Gantt chart shows the activities a student must undertake in a particular week. The coloured lines indicate the days when the student must work on those days. Pay particular attention to the first day, where the student must work on three different tasks on the same day. Obviously, the student should have planned his workload better. Maybe Emma's project could help with the planning. When you launch Microsoft Project, you will see the following main screen. It is divided into two main sections. The first section on the left is used to list all the tasks associated with your project, along with all the information associated with the task. This includes the task duration, start and finish times. The section on the right displays all your task information into a Gantt chart form. One of the first tasks you should complete is to sort out your working calendar. If we click on the project tab and select project information, we can choose the day our project starts. If we close that window and select change working time, we can see the calendar. On the right hand side of the window, you can see the predefined working times. If you click on the drop down menu, you can see some other pre-selected working time options. You can also click on options and modify the working day information there. When you look at the calendar, you'll notice that working days are in white and non-working days are in grey. If there are any public holidays or normal holidays, they should be recorded in the calendar. To do this, select the day on the calendar you require to change and enter in the reason for it being a holiday in the exemptions area. If the holiday is more than one day, you can adjust the finishing time. We will now look at inserting some tasks and allocating some durations. Some common durations are month, days and hours. Notice how the Gantt chart begins to populate when the durations are entered. In particular, it is important that you take notice of the difference between a normal duration and an elapsed duration. Take for example a duration of 7 days. If you look at the duration, you will notice that the task is assigned to 7 business days. Therefore, non-working days are not taken into consideration. If we change the duration of 7 days into 7 elapsed days by adding an E, you'll notice that now all working and non-working days are counted. Now you can appreciate the necessity of entering in all your holidays from the beginning. We will now look at entering some tasks with the example of purchasing parts for your project. To purchase parts, there are two main phases, being the risk assessment and the ordering phase. Let's begin by looking at the risk assessment phase. Once we know what the project is, you need to research how you will build it, book a meeting with the workshop staff, investigate ports to buy, meet with the workshop to discuss your design, reassess any recommended changes to your design, book a meeting with your supervisor, fill in a risk assessment project form, meet with the supervisor to check and approve forms, and then finally submit the forms. As you can see, there are a lot of steps to this phase. Some steps can be done at the same time, while others can't start until another step has finished. As risk assessment phase is the identifying name of the phase, we will make all the activities underneath it a sub-branch of it. To do this, we select all tasks and then click on the indent button. All tasks associated with this phase can be hidden or shown at the click of a button. We now need to determine the duration of each task so we can go through each task and associate an estimate duration. Remember that you have a range of time parameters that you can use such as years, months, weeks, days, hours, minutes, etc. Submitting the form is the milestone. It is what we are aiming to complete the risk assessment task phase. 
Milestones are created by setting the duration to zero days. You'll notice it becomes a little diamond in the Gantt chart. Now we need to consider how the different tasks are related to each other. When one task needs to be completed at the completion of the previous tasks, they are required to be linked. This is done by highlighting the tasks and clicking on the link button. Some tasks can be completed in parallel with other tasks. You use the shift key to select tasks that are in order and you use the alt key to select tasks that are not adjacent to each other. In the example, we will now fill in the second phase, the ordering phase. Like before, all the different tasks associated with ordering are listed and all the durations are filled in. We again need to consider the order that the items must be completed in. Sometimes there might be a period of time that needs to pass before the next step can occur. In project, this is called lag. For example, between submitting the risk assessment forms and obtaining the risk assessment approval, you may need to wait 10 business days. Therefore, to add lag to risk assessment approval received, select the task, right click it and select the information. Move to the predecessors tab and then under the lag column, add 10 days lag and select OK. You can also select information from the ribbon interface. After the change, if you look at the Gantt chart, you will notice that the remaining links do not follow the attributes assigned to them. This is because we are in manual schedule. You will also note project identifies the error by placing a red line under the finish date. To rectify this, we have two options. The first option is to select all the tasks and click on the respective links icon. The other option is to move from manually scheduling the tasks to auto schedule. Note in the video, I click on respect the links and then I undo the change and then go to auto schedule. You notice that they both have the same effect. Once we add the lag to the other items in our project, we can see all the steps and time required to purchase parts. At this stage here, you can review all the information and make any changes where required. Project also provides the capability of allocating resources to your project. You list all your resources on the resource sheet. Change to this sheet by clicking on the Gantt chart icon and selecting Resource Sheet. In the example project we have been working on, we have three main resources, yourself, workshop staff and your supervisor. You can assign costs to all your resources. You can also assign costs to materials that you need to use, as well as equipment and rooms that you might need to hire. We can now go back to our Gantt chart and assign resources to our task. To do this, select the task, right click and select assign resources. You then need to go to each resource name and enter in the percentage of time that resource will be allocated to that task. If the resource cost is $30 an hour and the duration is one day and one day equals eight hours, the cost is $240. I have gone through and entered in the resources for all the tasks. You'll notice that if you have an over allocation of resources, a warning is displayed in the information column. If you right click on the warning icon, Microsoft Project can help you resolve the issue. Project also provides you with a number of reports that you can use to analyze your project. This is selected from the projects tab. The first thing you should do is set a baseline. This baseline is used for comparing future changes against. The first report we will look at is a project budget. This baseline budget shows all the costs associated with a project from our original project plan. I am now going to change the duration of the workshop meeting to half a day and rerun the report again. You'll notice that the cost of a task has reduced and in the variance column you can see that you just saved $420. The project summary report 
available from Overview, provides a summary of the status of your project. This includes information such as the start-finish dates, the hours of work scheduled and costs. More importantly, it summarises how all these performance indicators have varied over time. The Who Does What report, available from Assignments, allows you to clearly identify the tasks and workload associated with every member of the team. It is very useful for team-based projects. You can also select Custom Reports. Custom Reports show you a whole range of the different reports that you can produce. Have a play with all the different types of reports and see the type of information that they provide. What is useful for your project. An important column of information to add is the Percentage Work Complete column. This is accomplished by selecting one of the column headers and right clicking on it. Then select Insert Column. You will notice that a significantly large list of predefined columns of project information is available to choose from. I recommend that you go through and explore the list. For now though, we will select the Percentage Work Complete column. This new column allows you to easily enter in the percentage of work completed on each task. You will notice that as the task is completed, a black bar fills within the taskbar of the Gantt chart. You now have a great tool to track the progress of your project. It is also important that you look through the variety of project views available. So far we have looked at Gantt chart and the resource sheet. Research usage is a great quick way of seeing the allocation of resources for the task. Notice how over allocation of resources appears in red. To be clearer, over allocation is like showing where overtime will occur. If someone has an 8 hour a day and they have been assigned tasks of over 8 hours, this is an over allocation. If you have assigned an overtime rate in the resource sheet, hours over 8 hours would then be paid as overtime. Removing any over allocation will then save your budget money. Going back to the Gantt chart view, we can clearly see there is an over allocation occurs on tasks 3 and 4. We can use project to help us try and avoid over allocation of resources. This is done via leveling. If you go to the resource tab, you can then find the different leveling options. In this case, I will select the two tasks that cause over allocation and select level selection. You will now notice that the resource allocation occurs across research construction is fixed but an over allocation now occurs on investigating parts to buy. I will now undo that change. Instead, I will now select Level Resource. Here you get to choose the resource that you would like to level. In this case, I will be leveling the resource myself. Now you can see the tasks that have been changed to remove the over allocation. If you go to the budget report, you will now notice a saving in your project. If you want to level all resources at the same time instead of individually, you'd click on the Level All icon. I would also recommend you explore all the attributes available via the task information. Click on one of the tasks and select Information. Click through each of the available tasks and explore the attributes that are on offer. One particular attribute to look at is under the Advanced tab. It is a constraint type. This is one of the most important attributes assigned to the properties of your task. The default assignment is as soon as possible, but as you can see there are a variety of constraints to choose from. Consider which is best for your task. Once again take the time to explore project and you will uncover a range of features. It is also handy to check out the predefined templates project has on offer. Good luck on planning your project.